Abuse may seem unpredictable, but it does follow a certain pattern, no matter what type of abuse it is. Understanding the cycles of abuse can help us make some sort of sense of a relationship where a person behaves in both loving and abusive ways towards us. If you have feelings of helplessness, desperation, if you somehow believe that you deserve to be mistreated, if you're at the stage where you're just emotionally numb or you fear or mistrust your partner, then these are signs that you are in an abusive relationship. Abusive behavior is the abuser's choice. It's a deliberate choice made by the abuser meant to control you. If you have ever spent any time at a shelter for domestic violence, you may have been educated about the cycle of violence. And if you haven't, then I know this is really going to help you put together some pieces of the mysterious puzzle when you're trying to figure out why the abusive person behaves the way they do. And I also want to acknowledge that even though men are stereotyped as being abusive, I think most of us don't realize that men find this particularly challenging because they face social ridicule if they do speak up about abuse. Men may find it much more difficult to reach out for help and can suffer shame and embarrassment of not being able to protect themselves. Men can be falsely arrested or manipulated to look like the perpetrator. But abuse is abuse, whether it's coming from a male or a female or whatever role this person has in your life. Most people associate domestic violence with just physical abuse. But I really want you to understand what domestic violence actually means. Domestic violence refers to violent or aggressive behavior within the home. It typically involves the abuse of a spouse or a partner or a family member. So domestic violence includes a number of forms of abuse from physical to verbal, emotional, financial and sexual abuse. It's based on control. So the abuser has the power in the relationship. So she or he will control the money, your friendships, how you dress, where you eat, the household. They may be jealous about everything and generally be threatening and intimidating if they suspect that he or she is losing control over you. So I want to introduce you to a concept known as the four phases. So there are several predictable phases in the cycle of abuse. Phase one is also known as the tension building phase. You suddenly realize for no apparent reason that there's something in the air, like a dark cloud looming. It may start over something as the slightest misunderstanding or miscommunication and you feel the tension building and your partner may appear on edge, tense, irritable and moody. Things start to escalate. They become very argumentative and authoritarian. He or she may start digging up inappropriate, random or trivial stuff from the past, becoming critical, finding fault, nitpicking. They may start behaving passive aggressively. They might use dominating and controlling language. They may intentionally reject or withhold any response. And this is the stage where the abuser will start accusing you and blaming you for all the reasons why you're making them feel the way they are. So in phase one, you feel the stress and the anxiety building. You become apprehensive and fearful. This is the crazy making stage. This is also the stage we start walking on eggshells. We start pleasing and appeasing. We try to figure out what's going on with them and doing whatever it takes to keep them calm. So we become extra nurturing, submissive, obedient, make their favorite meal. We try to reason with them and agree to everything. This phase can be very frightening and we feel really controlled. We can't seem to appease them no matter what we do. We can't make them happy. They're just intent on being really agitated and apparently it's all our fault. And I think you'll recognize that this is very typical codependent behavior. Phase two is also known as the explosive phase. So if phase one was the dark clouds looming, phase two is when the storm hits. And this stage marks the peak of violence. It's where the abusive incident occurs. It could be verbal, emotional, sexual, or a physical act of violence. A threat, a shove, 
intimidation, raging, temper tantrums. Then we move into phase three, which is also known as the reconciliation phase. So in phase two, the storm erupted. In phase three, the sun starts to come out. This is the stage where the abuser apologizes, becomes kind and generous. They'll do anything and everything to get you back in this stage. This is also the manipulative stage filled with false and empty promises. They may say, I love you, I'm never going to do that again. They might beg for your forgiveness. They may shed crocodile tears and make declarations of love and commitment. They may blame the circumstance, stress, financial issues, the children, being drunk or problems at work. This is the stage where they try to make up for their abusive behavior by buying you gifts, helping you out around the house, which they may not normally do, and put on a really good show to convince you that they've really changed their ways. They may even agree to go to therapy or to seek help when in this stage. And those who don't know about the cycle of abuse will continue buying into all these convincing acts and continue to delude themselves that the abuser has really changed and that it definitely won't happen again. So in stage three, the victim feels confused, hurt, betrayed, but also relieved. In stage three, they may blame you for their abusive behavior or make some sort of excuses that they can get away with. They may deny that the abuse happened at all or minimize it by saying it wasn't as bad as you claim. They may use pity plays to gain your forgiveness and say something like you're too good for me or threaten to kill themselves if you leave them. So this third reconciliation phase is also where the victim and the abuser bond in this post abuse period and their intimacy deepens. So if you've watched my previous video titled how you bond with a narcissist, you'll recognize that this is trauma bonding. So this is the stage where that bond intensifies. Then we move into phase four of the cycle of abuse. And phase four is also known as the calm phase. This is the phase where all is roses again and you forget the incident. You sweep it under the carpet. You both act as if nothing happened and no abuse occurs in this calm stage. Peace has returned and you're lulled into a false sense of security yet again. The abuser is on their best behavior it's like a honeymoon period. Stage four is based on massive denial and an inability to confront how bad we feel and how much the abusive incident really hurt us. So we bury this pain and suppress it. And we just feel really happy again that some sort of peace has been restored. Our hope returns and we ignore the possibility of it occurring again. In this fourth stage, we start convincing ourselves that they really have changed. We tell ourselves it wasn't as bad as last time. Oh, they really did make such a big effort to prove to us that they're sorry. I guess you could call this malignant optimism. Stage four is where the abuser develops a toxic amnesia where they amazingly just forget what they did or what they said. And they'll also expect you to do so. Over time, this fourth stage of calm typically disappears because the abuser has manipulated, terrified, and brainwashed the victim repeatedly over time and the victim perceives that they can't leave. So these cycles can happen many times and each stage can last varying amounts of time. So you might be in the calm phase for six months and you may forget and lose track of stage one, two and three ever occurring. So this cycle of violence is mainly in reference to domestic violence. Narcissistic abuse looks slightly different because the narcissist is unwilling to admit fault. Although they may pretend to admit fault and be very convincing of it, there's a fake sense of remorse. A narcissist will generally not admit to their behavior being a problem because apparently it's our reaction to their abuse that's the problem. So just keep in mind that every situation is slightly different and take what resonates and leave the rest behind. It's not my place to diagnose and that is not my intention here. So I just want to clarify. So with that being said, let's remember that abusers can have a variety of issues going on. They could be psychopathic, borderline, histrionic. They could also be alcoholic and have other addictions or psychological issues. 
that will have an effect on the way they behave and how this cycle of abuse looks. But narcissists have a more specific cycle of abuse, which I might talk about in another video. But I think most of us who are healing from narcissistic abuse can still gain a lot of insights by understanding the cycle of violence that I just described. I know it really helped me and I hope my interpretation gives you a wider perspective that may help you gain further clarity. It really takes a lot of self-awareness and honesty to be able to see our relationship in this cycle. Most people don't even realize that they are in a cycle of abuse. They do not recognize emotional and verbal abuse. It's really not mysterious at all. It's very predictable. It's not a special relationship like the abuser likes to convince us. It's common to all abusers. But you do need outside support. So by noticing and acknowledging the signs of an abusive relationship, that is the first step toward ending it. Nobody should continue to live life in fear of the person they love. And you deserve to feel valued, respected and safe.